we represent the diverse community we serve. Blink. Back about 10 years ago, but we never see an LGBT pride flag in front of police headquarters. I look in the mirror and I still see the old me, just something that doesn't go away. I really did not see it as a new. Even through my experience as a police officer, I still didn't recognise what I was going through as domestic violence. It was horrible. I felt like I was selling my soul when we had to arrest the We need to also have a diverse range of people within our service. Absolutely, it does get better. It does get better. It does get better. It does get better. There's no such thing as an average night, I don't think. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes there can be one to two arrests out of all of those people. Other nights we can have up to 40 arrests in the one night. I'm going to require to provide to stop walking away. As well as general duties, which is obviously my day to day role, I'm also doing a lot of uh, education now, both within the community and within the police, around domestic violence in LGBTI communities. It was, and I mean, I'm fine with it now, obviously, because I talk about it, but back then I didn't want a person in the job to know about it. reception than what I received, I think. I suppose it just goes to show there's nothing to ever be scared of. Everyone's I was in a DV relationship myself some years ago now, so I guess that's where a lot of my passion comes from uh, when it comes to DV, especially in the LGBTI community. Thanks, mate. Cheers. I've been to domestic violence incidents where it's been a same-sex couple. They can be quite apprehensive about telling a police officer about their sexuality, so being able to say, you know, it's fine, I'm not going to judge you. Even in some cases, I've actually told them that I'm gay myself, and that just sort of gives them a bit more comfort, knowing that they're not going to be treated inappropriately. I guess just being able to bring awareness to these issues and hopefully make some positive changes for uh, LGBTI victims of DV. We've got 98 full labs and 13 by one item labs. This is our normal day-to-day -day drug lab destruction day. So we do these once a quarter and we normally aim to do at least 100. 15 definitely feel a sense of achievement on a day like today because there's a lot of hard work that goes into us attending and processing these labs. They're dangerous, they're volatile, they're explosive. There are gases emitted that are odourless, colourless and toxic. So you can't see them, you can't smell them and they can kill you. You guys have got a big one behind you, six tubs with 58 exhibits. Drugs are a dangerous thing to society. They ruin families. They're just, it's horrid. And that's why I work at the drug squad. That all lives behind base. I've enjoyed my career immensely. I started as a constable. I'm now a detective senior sergeant. So I've earned the respect that I've got, but it's been hard and I've worked hard to get where I am. Okay, we're gonna audit this one, guys. Certainly being a lesbian in the police force wasn't easy years ago, but I would like to think, and from what I see myself now, it's much easier. People who have not come across someone like myself definitely have questions. It's a very humbling thing to be one of the first transgender officers. It's a nice feeling to know that you're an example of positivity. 
372 is the GHO as we're seeing. Unfortunately, the, one of the bigger part of the jobs up here is domestic violence, uh, which is never a nice thing, but it's, uh, it seems that it's everywhere at this point. What's been going on? Them two have just lost it. Which two? My daughter, my boyfriend. With general interaction with the public, it's, uh, it's a mixed, mixed bag. There's uh, a lot of disturbance type jobs we get to. People's emotions are already high. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be like this to you. That's okay. Oh. Look, my concern is obviously something's happened. No, I only need to find out if, you, if you're safe. Are you safe? Yeah. Are you fearful for your safety? No. I know that they're going to use me and use what I am against me or try. I've come to the point where I don't take offence to any of it. It's just no point. And this is what all the what? rage and the anger and all the aggression. No, I understand. It's a, it's a difficult thing. It's very difficult. Okay. Well, no. Sorry, I don't to That's it. right. Thank you. I won't take it personal. <laughs> oh, that was assault police, wasn't it? <laughs> But on the plus side, there are people out there who will, you know, make comment of it in a very positive way. They can say, oh yeah, you're very brave, or well done, and good on you, and you know, you're a role model or something. And yeah, I guess in some respects I may be, but I don't class myself as that. You know, I'm just doing a job, looking after my own family and uh, paying the bills. Well, when I first started out, there were a lot of us on the Gold Coast that were gay girls, but we all hid it because it was frowned upon. We would have been teased as we were. Morning. How are you? Anything I'm good? Anything happening? The management were all old men and they weren't very supportive. And they had a particular personal view about women being in the police force anyway. There was a small group of the men bosses that were pretty good to us there was a core group that were just vile. And for me, it just became, I got sick of the lies, I got sick of pretending to be something that I wasn't. And once you told everyone, it was sort of yesterday's news. So initially it was a big thing, but after a while no one really cares. And nowadays it's totally different. It's a much happier workplace. Ten years ago, I'd be sitting in the car with my partner and I'd have to tell them lies about where I'd been on the weekend. I couldn't tell them that I'd been out to gay bars and things like that. Uh, Victor 246 Life Centre. I couldn't tell them that I had a boyfriend. I couldn't tell them anything. It was always either lying about where I'd been on the weekend or I'd be telling them that I had a girlfriend instead of a boyfriend. Just come out here for me away from that knife. Ended up in a, I guess, a web of lies. I suggest you don't joke about killing people. Obviously going from that one extreme of lying to now being able to be completely myself at work and not having to ever worry about telling a lie. It's amazing. I guess for me it's like a double life. While I'm at work, obviously I'm wearing a uniform. Out of uniform when I'm going home or I go down to the local shops. Yeah, look, I'm as nervous as any other transgender person. It's actually coming to a point where I just want to be in the uniform all the time. It's definitely like a public perception of transgender people. I think on the back of that stigma, we, we put our own barriers in our place. That might be for me, it might be anxiety as how will I be perceived? Or will the next job all kick off in the wrong way? For other transgender people, it might be, uh, do I look convincing enough? That's the key to everything. It's, do you feel convincing? Or is the world staring at you as if you're a freak? I had to get to a stage in my life on my transition where I was confident enough to be able to go out on my own, and do daily things. So who we got here then? All the kids, Misty uh, and Jay. Misty and Jay. Never get rid of them now. No, nah, that's it. <laughs> Enjoy your walks. <laughs> the uniform, I mean, as I stand now, all you know, ready to go and do all the things. It certainly gives me a, a sense of strength, if you like. My name's Sasha Naomi Finney. I'm a Detective Senior Sergeant of Police. I'm the officer in charge of the Synthetic Drug Operations Unit, State Crime Command. So we're looking for drugs, items, anything to do with manufacture of drugs.
Oh, it's a thrill to lead a team like this because it's a cohesive unit. We've got each other's backs, we're friends, but at a scene like that today, obviously we have roles and responsibilities and as the team leader, as the detective senior sergeant, it's my responsibility to make sure that we all get there in one piece and we all go home in one piece and that no one's injured in any way. Do you have a, where is it? That's not what I asked. I asked you where is the register? I'd like to think that they see me as approachable because the senior officers when I was junior were not approachable. I'd like to think that that is changing. We've got some senior women and men now in executive positions and senior management roles that identify and are proud to identify that it's quite normal to be gay or, or bi or whatever. No one really cares as long as you come to work, put in your eight hours, do your job well, that's what we're after. Within the service we've come a long, long way in ten years. Obviously going from being in the closet and being terrified of being out in the service to obviously the position I'm in now where I'm out and proud and not afraid to be myself at work. I can hopefully promote the change, that we have changed, things are moving on, QPS has moved on, they've acknowledged the fact they got things wrong and I'm trying to prove to people through the job I do that actually you know, the QPS has accepted me, well they can accept you too if you give them the chance. As you can see from my team, the majority of them are men and they're a little older than me so you know they've probably not had as much exposure to LGBTI as I have and I think it's been beneficial for them to see that there's a lesbian who's our boss but she's pretty cool, she does a good job, she treats us well and so it doesn't become an issue ever. The amount of officers that are out now and are comfortable being out is fantastic. You are my reason to carry on. Would you like to wear one of our special ears fans with your yeah. beautiful outfit? Absolutely, sure. Never in my whole career did I think I would be standing at Big Gay Day in uniform with a gay pride patch, but it's a fantastic step forward in the right direction for the Queensland Police Service. People have come up and said that it's been great to see um, how involved the police are getting now and the uh, visibility that we've got with the LGBTI liaison officer program and uh, how that affects them and how much of a positive step it is for them to see the work we're doing. We respect you guys, you do a great job. Thank you. It's important. It's important to me as a gay woman, it's important to Ben as a gay man that the community knows that we're here to support them. The young people we've got to nurture through their experiences and their journeys because ultimately they're the ones who are going to be paving the way down the line in 10, 15 years time. So we need to get it right for them. I would say to young people, times can be tough, they will be tough, but there's always people that are there to help you no matter what. I think it gets better because people are aware that it's okay. I think it gets better because there's been legislative change to make support easier to access. And I think it gets better because people care and people will look after you. There's a world of support out there. Don't be afraid. Go and talk to a doctor, talk to a psychologist, or go and see PCYC. Get in touch with someone there. Get your mums and dads involved. I know that's a difficult thing and sometimes it's a harder thing, but you know, don't be afraid. Just be yourself and be happy. It's like a giant weight lifts off your shoulders. But know that there is people there that will help you. That's the biggest thing I can say. You're not on your own. We care. We've been there. It's hard, but you can do it. <laughs>